Hey, how's everyone doing today? It's CJ Halleck with VisionNet Media. And today I wanted to cover um, Facebook timelines for the business pages. Um, the timeline itself was announced in September last year for all personal profiles, but as of March 31st, 2012, all business pages have been converted over to the new timeline. And I figured since everybody has it, they might as well have somewhat of an understanding about how it works, the different parts of the timeline, what they're called, and the best way to use it and utilize all of the features to best grow your business and your online uh, visibility status as far as you know Facebook pages are concerned. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hop into it with my page and kind of break everything down and hopefully you can understand how everything works. Uh, I'll try not to get too techy and I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so here we go. This top part, and I'm just go over the different parts of, of the timeline and let you know what it's about and you know if there's anything special you should know. For instance, the cover photo, which is the big you know, kind of background header, if you want to call it that. Um, it's a great marketing um, point. You can use it to portray what your company's about or what your organization's about. But the one thing you cannot do is use it to market a product, use it for promotions, coupons, anything, you know, call to actions. Like you can't have huge arrow pointing down saying click the like button, you know, or anything to that nature. Um, you use it specifically to go over what your business is about or what your organization's about. Um, and you can have fun with it. There's There's a whole bunch of really cool um, examples. Um, Mashable did an article up a couple days ago, I think. It may have been yesterday, I can't remember. But they had a really cool one that, you know, kind of article that went over all the different cover photos from Ford, where they had, you know, the, the two part picture where their profile picture and their cover photo kind of went together, kind of like the way I have this set up. They had went over Red Bull and the way they have their logo implemented and Coke, and there's a whole bunch of them. So, if you get a chance, just you know, go to Google and search up cover photo Mashable, and you'll find a really cool article. And I think they went over like 20 different cover photos and why it was best and everything else. Um, the one they didn't go over, and I, I want to use this as an example, is because you can't have call to actions in the cover photo, there are certain things that you can, tricks and little subtle gestures that you can use to try to get people's eyes over towards, you know, the like button or get them, you know, over this side of the page, um, as obviously I didn't really do as you know, much. Um, I've had one person say that's a smart move, but I'll get to that in a second. But that's just, um, I think it was uh, Ben and Jerry's, uh, the little ice, the, the ice cream company, if I'm correct, had a huge cow, you know, over here on the side. So it was like, Almost nothing over here, big black spot, so your eye automatically gets drawn to the right side of the page, which most of the time, eyes normally head that way anyways, and thus, they see the like button. Um, Live Strong, um, the nonprofit organization, they had a, their entire background of the cover photo was black and had a yellow ribbon that just kind of went across here and came down and it kind of went right through the like button and the message button. I mean, it didn't go through it, but it stopped at the end of the cover photo and it picked up right here, which was for their blog. Um, really cool little way they, they, they done that. So take a look at that if you want some examples. Um, but that being said, as the cover photo, you have the profile picture, you know, and it displays everything just about the same. You have your information, then you have, instead of the tabs that were on the left-hand side before, you have feature boxes or, or app boxes or whatever you want to call them. Um, and you have eight. So you can drop it down. You can add up to eight. 
you know, you can rearrange them as simple as, you know, let's do it this way because I don't want to mess the top up. You can click on a swap positions with map. Boom. And then you auto, you can reposition them that way. You can open them up and do edit settings. And you can change the name of the actual thing, the, you know, the, the box. Save and hit OK. You can go in and change the image on some of them. So, with, you know, like I did here where it looks like little video players or here where it's a pretty big blog and real big letters. Um, and you can add a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, one of the big things I'd like to suggest is Involver. That's I-N-V-O-L-V-E-R. Um, it's a company that allows you to install two free apps. They have a paid version in case if you want more. But that's what I used for YouTube and the blog. It syncs the RSS feed so you can go in and look through different blog posts and you know it updates on your page and all that other stuff. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the content management part of this. Um, there's a couple different things that they had done that is really cool in my, you know, my opinion. Um, first thing, actually, before I hop into the content management, is the message platform. If you haven't noticed, when they rolled out the timeline for the Facebook pages, they included a message platform. So now you can actually message back and forth and talk to your customers, clients, fans, friends, or whatever you decide to call them. Um, followers, whatever. Um, but that was huge part of you know communication and uh, interacting with with your your fan base or you know your client base or whatever is huge. And this right here was incredible that they had, you know opened that up. So I just wanted to cover that. Let you know that that is not possible, but one of the things that they did put in um, when they did the timeline, you know, you goes back and forth on both sides, and every once in a while you'll do something that you really want shown. You know, it's something that's not big, but it's some, it's big enough to where if they're going through your page, you want it to be big. So they have the highlight feature, which when you click the highlight feature. What it does is it highlights it and it makes it the entire width of the page. So it gives them a full, you know, chance to take a look at it and, and you can read more or you can do a video and it makes it a bigger, you know, size, things of that nature. The next thing is if you have something that is really, I guess you can say, long term and important. Uh, for the best way, like for instance, um, I have a building a blog ebook that I want to give away. If for some reason I decide I want to make sure people see that as soon as they come to my page, I can instead of clicking highlight and making it the width of the page, I can click here and simply click pin to top. And what this does is it actually pins it and keeps it at the top for seven days. So for the next seven days when you go to VisionNet Media, the first thing that comes up on the left is going to be this post, if I don't change it by the time you see this video. Um, really cool. Um, incredible, really, when you think about how you know easy it is for them to allow you to market stuff like this. So that being said... Um, the milestones are huge. Now that they added that, you can go in and add, you know, big milestones in your company or your organization. Uh, when it was founded, uh, if you start carrying new products or, you know, new events that take place, if you, you know, host a Chamber of Commerce breakfast or something, that might be a big milestone for you or, you know, things of that nature. Um, you can also add past photos and, and status updates and things of that nature. Um you know, so post-dating events that you may not have had the time to go in and actually post or you something you simply forgot about. So really cool, you know, nice little add-ons that they had done. So that being said, um, I believe that's just about it to get everything, you know, through and cover how everything works. Uh, so that being said, stay tuned. 
Um, if you have anything that you, you know, any questions, feel free to ask. Um, this is going to be posted on YouTube, but uh, I will say go. Feel free to ask. Send me an email, um, cj at visionnetmedia.com. Uh, once again, that's cj at visionnetmedia.com. One N, by the way. Um, so that's huge. Um, I absolutely love answering questions. And if it's something that I think people will could use the information from, uh, FYI, I will make a video for it. Um, so if it's something that you really don't want people to know you're asking or whatever, feel free to just say, don't mention me at all or whatever. It's fine. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to leave a comment on the video. You know, if you see it on social media somewhere, comment on it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great day. Um, it's Tuesday, April 10th for me when I'm recording this. So enjoy your Tuesday. Don't work too hard if you're out there working. Um, and the sun's kind of shining. So enjoy the sun. Other than that, as always, be great and stay boosted. Take care.